October 4th to order and invite you to join with us and salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In case of fire, there are two ways to exit the chambers. To my left or to your right is through the double doors. Turn left down the double doors, down the flight of stairs, and turn left again at the base of the stairs and out, out, out the wall and safe distance away from the building. Also, perhaps the best way is to exit through the double doors in the rear of the chambers, down the stairs, and again, away from the building. Secretaries take the roll. Charles Duran. Here. Charles Ladd. Here. Nick Lefakis. Here. Mary Scott. Absent. Virginia Higley. Here. Ken Nelson. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. Sarah Gruber. Well, absent. What? Guillermo Salazar. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. Alternate uh, Gruber is required to stay at work this evening. And uh, Commissioner Salazar uh, will be the alternate that will be uh, taking the place of the absent commissioner. Okay. Before I started, I want to congratulate uh, Charlie for being selected as uh, Democratic Chair or Ch Democratic Man of the Year. Right. Well, congratulations. So congratulations. Oh, thank you. And uh, just as long as there are announcements, uh, one of the reasons I believe uh, Sarah was absent, as how uh, Sarah Gruber had been absent as she was uh, married. And I imagine it takes a little uh, she time. was at the tick. Yeah. <laughs> so she said she misses all of you and uh, was, was waiting to get back, but she had to work this evening. Okay, now we get that back to business. Staff report, town attorney report, we have none. Code enforcement is none. Anything for code enforcement, by the way, as long as we, we're there? Not this evening. <laughs> okay, staff report, uh, let's see. The approval of minutes, September 20th. So moved. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Any additions, errors, or omissions? Any. Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? Yeah. Unanimous. <laughs> okay. Items seven, eight, and nine are gone. We're public hearing. Twenty-nine. You need to do public oh, I'm sorry. You're right. It's okay. I skipped over public participation. At this point in the meeting, uh, we welcome uh, comments, concerns, and opinions uh, re relating to planning and zoning in Enfield from anyone who's present, provided you may not discuss any matter of business that's already elsewhere on this evening's agenda, any matter that's part of an open public hearing of the commission, or any matter where a decision of the commission may be pending. Anyone would like to address the commission under those conditions? Anyone like to address the commission under those conditions? Hearing none, we'll move on now to uh, no bond release. No bond releases. No old business. Uh, new business public hearing 2924, 496 Enfield Street. That's a special use permit. And the secretary take the roll and read the legal notice. Uh, they requested that I'm this sorry, one also the, be. They requested this one also be postponed because they don't—they're not here then. They don't—they didn't have any more documentation yet. Twenty-nine twenty-six. Listen. Twenty-nine twenty-four. Twenty-nine twenty-four. Twenty-nine twenty-four. Four ninety-six Enfield Street. I'm sorry. That's four ninety-six Enfield Street. Okay. I read the wrong one. Okay. Uh, on these, and I talked before, and we've we've done it before. It blocks other people from getting on the agenda. If they're going to do this, can we? Deny it without prejudice, because they can come back right away. I don't know when they're going to be ready. This is the second time they've asked for an extension. And we posted this in the newspapers? Yes. So we keep paying for them not to come. Well, 
Well, no. 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 Um, the legal ad uh, went in already, um, so it's fine. But it, and because we already know that the uh, <coughs> um, that they weren't going to be here at the time that we did the agenda and everything, um, it didn't really hold anybody up. Um, well, no, from but we could put agenda. anybody in that space because I don't know when when they, they may decide they're going to come. And somebody mm -hmm. else could take their place. That is true. Uh, I, currently, I don't know. in the office, we we don't have any other pending um, public hearings that are ready to go forward. Um, the only well, other it's also helps the commission to plan whether they're going to be here for a while or not be here for a while. And it just I would think it clogs <laughs> things up until they're ready. Well, I think it, your point is that if there was something that could go on the agenda something like this could hold it off that may not be the case this time but in the future it could well it's the second time i mean <clears throat> but, hey, i will say that they they are not presenting because we were not happy with what they had to present and i think that at the next meeting they will have it ready well so <clears throat> You know, it's, it's off and on for three I, years now. <laughs> yeah, I understand uh, your 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 point, um, but you know this this helps the applicants. If, if if for some reason there is something that we don't understand, this way they could still clarify it and keep going, um, because the time frame is the time frame. So we still have to adhere by that. So well, how, another question that was asked of me: How many extensions can they get? They haven't uh, needed any extensions because the mandatory open public hearing day is November 2nd. So if they were to go uh, past November 2nd, they would need extensions. Their requests are just to postpone the public hearing until like the next meeting and now until How many October 18th. How many postponements can you have? Can you have as many as you want? Is there a cutoff date for postponements? Not as far as I know. Well, it's up to the commission if they. Yeah. It's, I, mean, it's, I, I think a bigger thing too is what if this was a hot topic and there were 30 people showing up to speak. Well, I would Every think you're going to have to re-advertise it anyhow. Because that's what I mean by costing us. Yeah, you got to re-advertise it because people aren't going to know we right. keep doing this. Right. You do not have to re-advertise well, as long as it's to, posted. But you should for the public. Right. So I mean, what, we'll we'll look at this uh, for, at a future time and try. I mean, there's a lot of things that. Uh, staff and commission really need to talk about a lot of procedures and stuff that we really should have like a workshop well, regarding. We had decided before that we weren't going to load up the things and, and uh, keep giving people extension, extension, extension. They should understand that when they get on the agenda that it should be a go or, or, or right. not. I, I don't know how many extensions you want to give them. Well, they still uh, don't need an extension. It's just a, a postponement. A, uh, on a development and uh, it's a good thing we did do that because they still I guess they're ready to come in but uh, we denied it without prejudice because then they can refile anytime they're ready well That's hopefully they'll have the stuff that you need for the next meeting but either way why don't we just open it at the next meeting and then you can continue it, but that starts the clock ticking and makes it more urgent for them to take care of well, what they need to I take care of. Well, usually I do open it, and I should have, I yeah. guess. To open it. My usual oh, procedure what? is I open, I open it because the, the people know about it because it's legally advertised. Mm -hmm. This time I didn't because we were asked not. It didn't make any difference. There was nobody here. So what advantage does opening it? Well, to the applicant the or the I because mean, you can't. people are here and it's right. and when it's advertised and the people see it as a legal notice they come out but it, it <laughs> would probably more if the applicant was not here and you open it it will prolong the process because then they won't have any opportunity to but, uh, it gives the respond. people who may not be able to make time to come out and talk to us or, mm -hmm. or give their opinion uh, because one reason or another that they only have this one chance because they've seen it, they yeah. come down and tell us about it. it. That goes on the record and the, the, it is continued forward. Yeah. And the people that have the application have a chance to read the record mm -hmm. and can react to it when they do get here. 
Uh, very valid point. I, I understand that. I, I, you know, in the future, hopefully, I mean, you won't see an application. Generally, and also the, for the applicant, but uh, I think you could play the play the people for a while. You put in a legal ad, people expect it to be heard, and then they get all these right. push offs, mm -hmm. and they don't know they're pushed off because nobody tells them. Well, like I said, they didn't know they were going to be pushed off until we reviewed it and decided that it would be best that they postpone and, and get us clarification on some of the ideas on the plan. So, but in the future, hopefully, you won't see a plan unless it's absolutely correct and everything is there. And that's, uh, that's, that's that's the way I usually that's operate. That's what we've asked for before. We, so. keep, we kept getting these because people try to be friendly with them and if they come in and they say they're ready understood uh, well, you try to try to help them yeah but point made if, okay you know I, Move on. okay <laughs> I, all right public hearing 20 uh, well, mr. mr. chair I'll make, make a, a motion, motion that we continue public hearing 29 24 to our next meeting on October 18th second all in favor? One, two, three, four, five. And opposed? One, well, five. Salazar, I didn't get. Four? Four. And Linda, you're four. Okay, so six, one. Six, yeah, six, one, zero. All right. Uh, now SPR is 17. 2926. That's the one I was going after before. I get the numbers right. Charles Duran. Here. Charles Ladd. Here. Nick Lefakis. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Ken Nelson. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. Guillermo Salazar. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. And Mr. Chair, I have to recuse myself from this hearing, this application. You do. Yes, I work for both Phase Zero and I do O'Reilly's work. Well, okay. Uh, Commissioner Salazar, uh, Alternate Salazar, and DeGray will be sitting in for the absent commissioners. Okay, is the applicant here? Okay, come forward. And uh, if you will, set up your display on that uh, tripod, and the camera is able to pick it up. And at the same time, it'll be sending out over the uh, internet for TV. I'm sorry. Televised. Yeah, they do both, I guess. Okay, if you will name an address, please. Um, for both of you. For both of you. Hi, folks. Uh, Randy Myron of Bowler Engineering, 352 Turnpike Road, Southboro, Massachusetts. Hi, Lauren Soroy, Phase Air Design, uh, 35 Pond Park Road in Hingham, Massachusetts. Okay. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, you're on. Okay, great. Um, hi, folks. Uh, so I'm Randy Byron with Bowler Engineering here on behalf of the applicant, O'Reilly Auto Parts, um, for the special use permit application. Uh, the site address is 561 Hazard Ave. Um, that is a, um, uh, the board in front of you is the, uh, basically an existing, uh, an, an, I guess an aerial overlay with the proposed site plan laid on top, um, just to kind of give you a flavor of what's out there today. Um, 561 Hazard Ave. It's approximately a 33,000 square foot lot. Um, it's located within the business local zoning district and also within the uh, Skidigo design overlay district. It's currently a uh, an abandoned Webster Bank. I think it has a two or three lane drive through along with a with a with a parking lot. Um, access through the or to this particular lot is obtained to the uh, from the plaza to the east. You can see that there's two driveways. Um, that connect to the plaza to the east um, and I mean that's generally it in terms of what's out there today the other thing I just wanted to point out is that 
the existing lot is not compliant from a, uh, a la I guess a landscape buffer setback. It currently has pavement um, within the uh, within the 10 foot buffer that's required by the zoning bylaws. Um, and I guess just before I get into the proposed project, I just kind of wanted to give you a little bit of history of where we where we've been through with this project itself. Um, we have had several meetings with town staff with Jen, um, and they've kind of helped guide us along the way. We've also obtained um, relief from the Zoning Board of Appeals um, to allow parking within 10 feet of a building. Um, and we will be applying to Connecticut DOT for some of the, some of the work that's being done <coughs> within the right of way. Um, let me just flip to the site plan here. Is that good? So that's just the proposed site plan colored up with some of the landscaping also. Um, so the project itself is a 7,200 square foot O'Reilly Auto Parts. Um, there is 22 parking spaces being proposed. We are basically maintaining the same access that's out there today that exists through the through the plaza to the east. Um, the project is proposed to be fully compliant with the zoning regulations with the exception of the, uh, of the relief that we obtained through the Zoning Board of Appeals to allow parking within 10 feet of the building. Um, we are also providing compliant landscape buffers uh, around the site, kind of around the perimeter of the site. Um, we have also situated all of the parking to either the side or the rear of the lot, and that's in accordance with the, uh, uh, the Skidico design overlay regulations. Um, and we are also providing a, although it's kind of tough to tell, but we're also providing a new, um, a new sidewalk along the site's frontage that'll connect to the sidewalk to the west, along with a, uh, there's an ADA compliant uh, sidewalk that connects the front entrance of the O'Reilly's to, uh, to the sidewalk within the right of way. Um, in terms of, uh, I guess, stormwater improvements, we are increasing impervious areas slightly from what's out there today. There's a small increase of, I think, around 1,600 square feet. So to help mitigate this, we are proposing a new stormwater management system. There's a, uh, there's a new underground infiltration system that's proposed to capture and collect runoff from the roof. Um, there's also some new deep sump catch basins that are proposed within the parking lot. Um, and those all tie into a new, uh, there's a new water quality unit to help treat the storm water before it goes, uh, connects downstream. If I may, would you use this, because I don't know if the people in back, if you can hear as well. Sure. Because that one really picks up better than the one that you're holding. Sure. That, yep. That's designed more for up the other end. Pull, uh, pull the microphone towards you a little bit. There's also new uh, erosion and sediment controls being proposed around the site, and we did, we did include some uh, details of those within the plans that were filed with the commission. Um, we are, of course, there's new utilities for the O'Reilly that are being proposed. They're all underground, new water, sewer, uh, gas, and electric services. And there's some new fresh, uh, fresh new landscaping being proposed in addition to some street trees that are proposed along, along Hazard F. I think in total there's uh, 12 trees and about 30 shrubs that are being proposed throughout the site. Um, in terms of the, uh, the lighting improvements, we are proposing new site lights to, uh, for, uh, excuse me, to, to light the parking lot. Um, they are decorative style lights. The, the heights of the lights are, I think, 27 and a half feet. Um, and the lights are kind of like a, um, it's like a candy cape candy cane style fixture with a teardrop um, at the bottom of the fixture. There's some cut sheets that were included in the in the plans that were filed with the uh, with the commission. Um, in terms of I guess traffic uh, impacts associated with the project, we also included a, a trip generation memo um, with the uh, with the submission. Um, and essentially the traffic impacts are equivalent to uh, 
uh, well, the, the trip generation memo pro provides a comparison of the, uh, of, the, of the trips generated by the Webster Bank versus the trips generated by the O'Reilly. And essentially, they're basically equivalent. Um, that's, uh, I think that's pretty much it. Um, <laughs> In terms of the site improvements um, that are being proposed, um, let's see. The, oh, the one thing I should also point out is that uh, O'Reilly has a there's a delivery door over in this area right in here, and they do get deliveries from a tractor trailer truck approximately five uh, five times a week. We've designed the parking lot to accommodate that uh, that delivery truck, and it, it'll come in pull in and then back up into this area and that's where the loading and un unloading is done uh, just I, may I ask you an orientation program uh, sure problem yeah on the, sh the building that you have lab labeled the uh, front back and side with uh, I don't know if it's northeast south or west uh, what's the front facing east the front facing east yeah and yes. actually L Lauren would Oh, Lauren will actually, we have Lauren Soroy with Phase Zero. She'll present the building. All right, and just as you were talking, I was trying to put one and one to get, make yep. two out that's of it. Yep. Okay. Um, that's Phase East. Yep. Okay. That's it. Yeah, that's generally it, folks. Here, let me know. Throw your throat board up. Facing the parking lot. Yeah. Of course, it could be a more smart on it, but they didn't open up. So. We won't tell. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we won't tell. Okay. Okay. Good evening. So this is the O'Reilly building that we have uh, come up with for it's kind of a um, hybrid prototype building along using all of your standard, your, I um, can't think of the word, your requirements for the town. So. O'Reilly's is typically, they use a pre-engineered metal building for the inside. And then they come along and they put a CMU block. For this one, we have, instead of standard CMU, I use a concrete brick that's custom colored to what O'Reilly's typically uses. It's a very nice, never has to be painted. It's all the way through, the color's all the way through. And then for accents, we use um, a CMU block that's this color. And I can come up and pass them around if you like. Sure, yes, please do. Yes. Awesome, down to you. And then to add some New England flair to it, I added some clapboards that are made of a poly ash that once you, you paint them, they will be good for a they say around 30 years that it, they, they're they not real wood, so they're not gonna fade like wood, and they're not gonna deteriorate like, like wood. And then for the roof, and this is my first pitched roof for O'Reilly's. Uh, we have used a hip roof that I believe complies with all of your standards in the town. And um, in the back and the rear, there will be a small area for the RTUs, but I've screened it in so you completely, I know this site you can see 365 degrees around it, so I've screened it in so you cannot see any of the mechanicals up there. Any questions? Okay, well, uh, questions. Very well thought out, it looks like a lovely building. I just had one question. Um, just out of curiosity, the tractor trailer deliveries uh, five days a week, that's great because I know how busy O'Reilly's is. But um, could you give a range of time, you know, like is it good two o'clock in the morning, eight o'clock in the morning? It's, it's typically done early in the mornings, usually before the store opens. And they open up at, uh, I think it's 7 or 7.30. Thank you. Are you going to have anything on the roof like fans or uh, air conditioners or compressors or any of that? Because they, should, they have to be covered. You're not supposed to be able to see them from the street in our town. Yes, yes. I do provide. Let me get up. Can, can you hear her, Charlie? I, <laughs> okay, she just went I over do. all of that. I have a, a, a screen right here. Okay, so you won't see yes, any you didn't of that. see that. Yeah. 
I didn't hear that, no. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I asked. No, I know. That's why I asked if you could hear her because you didn't, you must have missed that whole thing. No, no other questions? I just one quick one. Are you going to use the existing pad that's there or are you taking that a new pad? New pad. That's all I have. Okay. All right. Uh, are you done? Anything from? Uh... So um, we gave you the staff report. Basically, um, they pretty much did their best to meet all of the standards. Um, we had a few site-specific conditions that we uh, recommended. I know you guys often ask for six-inch bollards. Um, we noticed in the details that they're four-inch bollards, so we put that as a condition of approval if you want to ask for it. I, it's in there. I read. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah you I'm, moved it in. I, yep. I'm, I, I think was just the larger over. bollards would, would be needed. That that's what we've had before. We've gone to six inch mm -hmm. rather than the four. Um, other than that, we just ask that the final plans that are submitted for the architectural plans just be signed and sealed. That's pretty standard. Um, and the elevations to be in color, so that that's what the final plans that stay in the file forever will be. Um, and then the. Uh, traffic safety officer just asked that the um, handicap signage be updated to current standards, which is something the building department would probably catch anyway. Um, and then the other thing was that you got you received the comments, um, the rest of the department comments at your desk um, tonight, and they one of the um, comments from the water pollution control just had to do with a um, the size of um, the pavement for the for the piping that's proposed on site. Um, so I, I would just add another site specific condition that says that the concerns of the water pollution control um, be addressed, so. Have they seen this? Yes. yes. Yep. Oh, we did. Well, no, well, yeah, this letter. But uh, have you seen the, uh, the standard or the conditions that have uh, been put on the list of conditions? I have, yes. Okay. Yep. Do you have any problems with them? No, I think everything seems fine. And I, I'm, Jen, I'm assuming, yeah, you'll, you'll right. add the, the water pollution control. The only thing is now is engineering checked the uh, slopes and uh, the, their connections to the storms, uh, to the, <coughs> yeah, the storm sewer, I guess. Is that water pollution? But yeah, all right. Um, but engineering usually yeah. checks this stuff too. Yeah, and the health department, um, they they uh, commented and said that it's serviced by the public sewer and public water, so. Okay. Anyone in the public would like to speak in favor against this application? Anyone in the public would like to speak in favor against this application? Last call to speak in favor against this application. Well, commissioners, what's your desire? Uh, I'd like to uh, make a motion um, regarding PH 2926-561 Hazard Avenue draft resolution for commission consideration. Whereas the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission has received a special permit application for the construction of a new... Please don't read the whole thing. Oh, don't. Just, I was Just cite it. Okay, last time you told me to read the whole there's thing. There's many, there's many uh, pages here. Okay. I wasn't going to read the whole thing, but anyway, well, we were, it's, uh, it's resolved that the Planning and Zoning Commission hereby approves PH 2926 for the construction of a new 7,218 square foot retail store located <coughs> in the Skidico Development Design Overlay District at 571 Hazard Avenue, O'Reilly Auto Parts, owner applicant, map 110, lot 387. BL Zone Skidigo Design Overlay District in accordance with the 31 conditions uh, and the reference plan, the, the reference plan. Uh, the 31st would would be the water pollution control addressing. Second. Motion's Se made and seconded. And the date, the staff report's dated October 4th mm -hmm. for the reference. Thank you. Motion is made and seconded. Any discussion? 
Just I think, think it's a great idea. I it's, know. <laughs> I have been, could hardly wait for Some you to Some of open. you may not remember the only auto parts what store is? was Dominic's up on Enfield yep. Street years oh. and years and years okay. ago. Well, and that's long gone, and it's something I think the town needs. And I think congratulate the, your. I think the town will be that. pleasantly surprised. O'Reilly's well, carries parts that other people don't. And you know their commercials are great because it gets stuck in your head. Yeah, oh, yes, oh, it does. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you can't get rid of it. I want to vote no just because of that. Now it's stuck in my head again. <laughs> okay. All in favor. Whoa. Unanimous. Thank you, folks. Thank you, well, thank you very Enfield. much for considering Welcome. Enfield. Yeah. <laughs> we do? Yeah. Where? Are, are we going to keep the samples or not? Uh, do you uh, Randy, can we just hold on to those plans from the board? The I guess yeah. until it's built. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, well, yes, well she's the boss anyway. Yes. So the blocks? Yeah. No. Because you presented them, just to make sure they're the same ones that we have in the file. Well, I know they had a lot of <laughs> weight up on the third floor. What? Okay. Rich, you did a good job. It was a nice building. <laughs> it failed, Rich. <laughs> okay. Uh, site plan review. SPR 1756. Uh, 472 Taylor Road. Charles Duran. Here. Charles Ladd. Here. Nick the Fakus. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Ken Nelson. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. Guillermo Salazar. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. Okay, uh, Commissioner Salazar will be sitting in for the absent commissioner. Is the applicant here? Will you come forward? Please identify yourself and give us the details, I guess. You can bring up another chair. Yeah. Lawrence Lloyd, 289 Main Street, Wilbraham, Mass. Uh, Kent Picoy, uh, 17 Peak Road, Wilbraham, Massachusetts. That's that, that one. Uh, Jacqueline Picoy, 17 uh, Peak Road, Wilbraham, Mass. Okay, thank you. I have a point of clarification to start. I noticed on the agenda only one of the items that we wanted to talk about in yeah. reference to a, uh, change I noticed in the, that too. That was it's great. Okay, so do you have in your packet a home plan that we had proposed a modification to? No. I had heard that that was coming and that you were in and had talked to staff, and you had new models. N no, it's it's not a new model. It's the it's the Abbott model that a customer wanted to buy and slightly modify to add some storage space. So. Basically, what's happened is the garage on the right side of the bay has been, uh, it, it's deeper. So it's, it creates like a tandem garage. And the, the idea is to keep the square footage of the house roughly the same by taking an existing jog off the back and just pushing it out a little farther. Okay. Because my question was, I, I had heard that there was a different model, but these are only additions to it. Yes. Uh, so there's, there's two parts to the conversation for us. First, we wanted to see if you would approve this modification. And then going forward, we anticipate that probably three quarters of our customers will want to modify the eight plans that we have. This is what happens with a Pequoy development as a custom builder. Well, I, that's what I was going to ask about, uh, because I know you had to go through uh, whether or not the particular house would be able to fit on the uh, lots. Yes. And you had to change some of all that around. Now, how? My question with that was, how is this going to affect that? It still will fit. It's all the same it all still would fit yes. because it was, I think it was uh, commissioners or engineering was concerned about slopes and, and size. Uh, right, but it does fit. We had, the, we had the engineer look at that and this fits. Okay, but will that be the case in, in all cases? But, well, that's our job, to make sure it fits within the, the envelope that's provided, right? Yeah, but I, I forget what the, what, what uh, conditions we made when we did it's that. It's been a while. Mr. Chairman. It's been a while, and I don't remember what we did when we, because you had to 
identify what lots I think that uh, right that's correct because yeah, mr. chair I think that the reason the, the area that we had the most concern is is the first area that they're working in in, in terms of phase number one I think that the, you know the, the maximum slope actually occurs you know at unit number 67 if my memory serves me correctly in terms of that is the lot that has the, the, the most significant s severe slope so that does. you know so it would be probably you know 68 67 and 66 that would be affected by you know potentially any you know encroachment into the right so this kind of change that we're asking for on this plan would not fit on those lots and we understand that well uh, okay then so is there uh laurie is there anything that we have to do okay now uh, this was not in the the legal ad is this is this anything uh, mr chairman this this I, I would normally would have considered this a minor modification of the architecturals um, as long as they meet the intent of the, what the architecture looks like right. and they and they could meet the setbacks right I didn't feel that it was really um, uh, uh, something that was really a modification it was more of a field change um, but we could discuss how that works in the future so that's why I didn't include well, it no that that's all right if you, yeah. if, you uh, if you consider that but as as we sat here and I remembered that we we went through that and had him mm -hmm. design the the houses that would fit on particular right. lots. Uh, Rich remembered what lots we were talking about and why. Right. Uh, the, they will have to certainly show how each unit will be fitting in as it relates to the next unit and with the topography and grading. So therefore, we don't really have to take this up. Then it, it'll. Not really. No. I mean, I was going to kind of just show it to you informally, so, I mean, because they're going to have to show it on, on a site plan that it will fit and the grading and everything will be proper. Okay. So, so that we're clear, what we were looking for is administrative approval of these. Is that what you're saying, yeah. Lori? Essentially, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, well, let's, do you want to do that now? Yes. Yes. Well, yeah. we'll make a motion, someone. Mr. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we allow for administrative approval of modifications to the footprint of the buildings that are being constructed. And you know, the only stipulation is that the grading does not significantly you know, change or impact the stability of the existing soils and the existing conditions that are there now. Second. Motion's made, second. Any discussion? <clears throat> Is that uh, okay, Lori? Certainly. Okay. I don't like to ask her if it was okay, the motion. All right, all in favor? Opposed? to unanimous. So that's okay. Care that's of. item number one. Thank okay. you. <laughs> so uh, the other item on the agenda is construction phasing, and this ties back to the conversation that we've had about bond. And I have said repeatedly that the bond at 500 and something thousand dollars is an impediment for us. Yeah. So we've had, uh, we've really thought a lot about this. Came back in to see Jen and Lori Kent and I did uh, to talk about this a little bit. And a new idea has come forward that we'd like to propose for you. So I'm just going to look at a little math here. If you take the $502,750 bond requirement in the three bonds, and divide by 39 home sites, you get $12,891.03. What we would propose is that we would post a cash bond every time a building permit is issued. That bond would stay in place until an occupancy permit is issued, and then it would be released. This will do a couple things. First of all, we have customers that are looking at Watch Hill, but also looking at Copley, and in between. So if we were to have to open up four of these phases, it would be quite expensive for us. So this would allow us to move around, basically take the bond off of one lot, maybe move it next door, maybe move it up the street a little bit. So it would help us that way. Uh, the other thing that this would do is it would really render this construction phasing plan irrelevant because we're just posting a bond on a lot moving along and um, you know that will as I said would allow us to move around with construction so that's the concept a, a $12,891 cash bond per permit mm -hmm. Ex well, excuse well, me just for clarification that, that would be so what you're saying is you would just do this per unit without any phasing correct 
I just wanted to clarify yep. that. Thank you. Yes, How far ahead. along is the infrastructure, the it, roads? It, and it's nearly complete. We're, there's just top coat to go on, um, I would say, maybe a quarter of, of the uh, roadway up there. There's a little bit of electrical work that needs to be done, but the conduit is in place. This is unusual. It's a, it's a, it's a stable soil condition up there. If you, you know, we have to mow it, and it's, it's a lot of work to mow it because the grass is so thick on, in, uh, on these home site areas. Yeah, initially back... Uh, there was a problem with with water and that's all been corrected because they put the drainage instead of down into some of the ponds they put it out into the, uh, the street there's a fire out there but they, I, they I guess I'm, I'm my, sorry. my point is if the infrastructure is 90 percent complete why are we still at a $500,000 bond? Because there was a discussion last time, and maybe Ken's memory will come back. It was a discussion on uh, the roads that he had, the roads had, had to, to be, be completely finished, paved completely sealed. paved and sealed or whatever they do before the, he went on to the next phase. No, well, I think that well, was. Mr. Nelson, so one of the bonds is four hundred seven thousand seven hundred dollars it's for site restoration and that's for all 39 lots so this is, implies that we're going to go in dig up 39 lots and then just leave the project yeah. and then the town would have four hundred eight thousand dollars to restore the site we would never do that you know maybe four five six houses at one time uh, foundations will go in immediately we work all the way through that uh, to us this means that we're basically being bonded for the installation of a lawn that we're legally obligated to put in anyways well it this I think was uh, the finished coat on the roads yeah that's what the I believe the finished coat on the road was uh, we had to um, put a covenant on a few lots to cover the the uh, pavement on the road this was for soil erosion and we questioned that bond repeatedly um, with Roger because the site is totally stable. It's, it's lawn, there's pavement in. This is a finished subdivision. We've had two or three bonding companies go up there and look at it, look at it and they come back with the same question. What, what are you bonding? Why, why are we doing this? Um, so we've had tremendous difficulty getting an insurance bond. So it has to be done with a, a, a cash bond. But your question is a good one. I don't understand the relevance of a bond. I mean, we build in all, all sorts of towns, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and I've never had to post a bond like this before. Especially on a private road. Well, on public roads, you know, subdivisions I've been involved in in this town, we posted a letter of credit. And then, like, landscaping on each individual lot was a separate landscaping bond for each lot. And once the grass was stable, the engineer looked at it, he released that single bond. Jenny, you worked in the office when I did them. Yeah. So this gentleman being charged a half a million dollars for something that's 90% well, done. I was just going to ask Laurie how John Kibibbo felt about it, because he usually has a big say <laughs> in Yeah, bond. he does. It's on the... Uh, well, I can tell you what he said. He refers to a, in a, a book. There's a formula they use for, for square yardage, and it's like nine cents a foot. And he said, this is what we do. He said, I measured it. It comes out at $408,000. So, so um, John Cabibbo and I have had some conversations about this because I also agree that that's, that the bonding is a little bit crazy. So um, the other thing is, is if this were a subdivision and these units were actually on a lot, there would be a lot less requirements for the, the uh, bonding. Mm -hmm. So because the subdivisions are bonded differently. You, you take care of the road, you take care of the erosion controls, and then the landscaping is per lot, or maybe you know, you've know you got two street trees or something along those lines. So what I was trying to talk with him about was to do something similar to what they just suggested, to just bond per unit. And But with that unit, we're going to need to see a site plan that shows that the grading and everything is, is proper. So. so that's a lot of work for staff and for um, the applicant. I like Ken's suggestion. Have you tried a letter of credit? Well, I'm not even not for five hundred thousand oh, dollars because no. that ties his no, credit no, 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 up. No. But I'm saying yeah, that no. if they have a bond for house one and they mm -hmm. finish house one and then they take that bond and they go to house two, that's not how it's done. Um, I'm not saying it can't be done that way, but I'm saying we release bonds. So are we going to do 39 bond releases? 
Is staff going to do 39 well, bond the, releases? Well, and at, who's this, be at this particular state of Connecticut, mm -hmm. and new construction mm -hmm. is stagnant. Oh, I, that subdivision has been sitting there for it, years, it, it, and this gentleman took a chance on it. I know. And I think we as a town need to work with him. He's one of the most reputable builders out there. He's not going to run from this. No. I'm not saying waive the bonds. No. But I'm saying we work with him and bond each just like a regular subdivision because I, the age restriction, is that still on that? Yes. 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 Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as far as site plans, you know, the modification of the foundations, people want custom homes now. And he needs to do what he can do to entice these people to buy from him because they're going up everywhere and it's just tough out there right now so as a town i'm willing to work with him and if you know bonding each individual lot does it the only concern i would have is the cost of the road mm -hmm. to finish it if he does finish the entire subdivision mm -hmm. you know and there's only two houses bonded for twenty four thousand yes. dollars that doesn't cover the top coat right so you know maybe working that and a letter of credit together or something but i'm open for suggestions i'm willing to work yeah. was there something in that That's, when we did roads before that if he finished a, a loop or a road that he had yeah. he had to pave it what about yes something? I, I he couldn't know. he couldn't start another one until he finished that one no no, no. The, the way it the way it worked was we had to before the final quarter of the per, of the permits could be issued the top coat of the road had to be finished six lots six so it's six okay six lots we had six lots under covenant that we couldn't build on until the top coat of the uh, road was put on to, to address your concern about the top coat so that we would never be at a point where we're out of the subdivision and the top coat wasn't down now typically that's when i would put a top coat down i'm going to wait until very close to the end uh, yeah, that was a discussion. He should. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, he should, that, should be the last thing done in that. That, that, was, a, that was a discussion right. last time, but I didn't know how many, uh, how far it covered. I, I want to offer break. another observation, too. We've been waiting over a year to get started on this project. Construction costs have gone up 25% oh, no. hmm. over the last year. We could have had seven, eight, nine units finished and now we'll have to offer them at a higher price to make our margin so we need to get moving could they so, could they just bond for like five units at a time does they have to be next to each you're other tying, what and, and this is discussing back and forth what if the town were to do something and i don't even know if this is possible because we've got to keep track of to the point when you get down to the last six or eight units to make sure the road is paved some sort of a lien or something in your records that show you know we're down to the wire that's produced. what the covenant does it's a covenant yeah and you know the covenant says we can't build on there's six lots that are very specific to this subdivision yeah that we can't build on those six lots we can move them around oh right but we can't build on the last six lots until we've paved up and that's the already in it that's already yeah, that's that's what i said so we each lot is worth fifty thousand dollars you know, there's three hundred thousand. He's tying up right there. Well, that's why I remembered that on the roads. There was that. The, the, the top the coat of asphalt for this, um, for what we have to do there, what's remaining there, we've had quoted at seventy-two thousand dollars. So it's it's well insulated. Mm -hmm. um, well, the bond I, for the, the drainage is one that concerns me though, because when we were in the last time when we got all of our approvals, we understood it, and I was very clear in that meeting that I was not willing to post a bond for anything. I would covenant, but I wouldn't bond. And it was after that meeting that Roger informed us that we had to come up with this $500,000 bond. So that's why this project has been uh, stagnant. I think that it's going to be very popular. Well, it yeah, looks it's like nice lovely lo homes. It's a nice location. Yeah. My question is, would you work on more than one house at a time if you had the buyers? He'd yeah, we would probably. Once if he could. Well, no, no, uh, the, the thing is, then you would have to post the uh, bond for each one of them. Yeah, but typically we're going to have, you know, I believe I have four sold right now and I have two more to put that's in. Great. So uh, there's six of them that would go under. But typically that's as many as we're going to have simply because I don't have staffing to do more than that. Okay. Um, you know, one thing that I would propose is that we just post a letter of credit for to cover six lots. Okay. Uh, and then, you know, we float that. If it, needs, if, it's, if it needs to be more than that, we do that. But we can handle that very easily with Lori. Um, I, I, know, I know engineering their numbers are very very skewed when it comes to blacktop and paving because i had the same problem on the last subdivision we finished 
and it was something very similar to this dollar amount which made no sense and even after we did it our numbers were accurate the town is like one and a half times or something crazy to cover it if he does a covenant on and i'm going to say because the town's coming up with five hundred thousand if we do a covenant on eight lots that'll be four hundred thousand and then he posts a bond on each individual lot at uh, twelve thousand or whatever the number was we're covered he's covered he's free to sell these you know all throughout the subdivision because i know me i'm fussy i want that lot right there and yeah. it's going to be the one that's not cleared and the roads not cut in or anything like that because i'm a pain and you know but right now he has to do what he can do to sell these homes oh, absolutely. Yeah. Right. and i mean it's a beautiful start in there let's make it a beautiful end and keep that's people one of the in challenges I, I think you know in the past it's been with this project because they would only do one lot after another you know so we have one lot sold we have uh three lots sold on copley and two lots sold on watch hill and one down on the uh the bottom of meachin so i mean that's where people want to be and i should also say that they're um they're different price points so we're attracted, trying to attract different people you know at different price points and that's how a project becomes successful uh, we modify the plans uh you know to uh, a homeowner's desires but we don't modify the front elevations. You know, those typically are going to stay consistent with everything else that's in there. It's what's inside the home that's going to change, and that's just minor customization to to somebody's personal lifestyle. So, because I, I have a question in terms of when you do the top coat, would you be doing the top coat on the entire complex at one time, or would you be doing facing that at at different times? Most of it's done. Well, I'm just looking at, you know, like Watch Hill has two cul-de-sacs in terms of you have an up, upper cul-de-sac that obviously has its, you know, prefer, periphery of buildings that are around that. So, I mean, if, if you sell, you know, the upper cul-de-sac first, would you be paving that cul-de-sac as soon as, you know, all those homes around that cul-de-sac are that's done? A really, or? That's a really good question. I wouldn't see that on Watch Hill, but I would see that on Copley and on Meacham. So if, if, all, the, if all the lots are maybe one lot was left on Copley, we would pave that. What okay. we don't want to do is have a lot of seams. Right, right. right. Yeah. That's well, where you're going to get all right. the Right, well, that, that's what I'm thinking is that, you know, that could be part of, you know, the requirement that as you complete 90% of the homes around one, you know, cul-de-sac or one lo location that, you know, you, you sort of finish that up so that everybody has the, the, the advantage of having, you know, a, a, a finished, you know, And pavement. we would want to do that. Uh, you know, right. we want to get that top coat down and get the manholes and everything uh, to the right elevation as soon as we possibly can. You know, it's just getting the concrete trucks and the dump trucks in and out of there because right. they beat up the road so badly. But, you, you know, ideally we'd go in and put the top coat down now, you know, from a construction perspective, a plowing perspective, and a maintenance perspective. But from a longevity perspective, that's right. the wrong thing to do. So, so as, as long as that's, you know, part of your thinking, then, I, you know, I, I would support that type of thinking. We want to get that top coat on as quick as we can, you know, because the binder is going to break down at some point anyway. But uh, until we're, you know, mostly through with a with a section, we're not going to we're not going to top coat it. But I would see um, Watch Hill as being all one continuous piece of asphalt. Not no no seams in that. So you would said there is top coat down already in parts of it. In parts of it, yes. There's right, top so coats uh, when you come in all the up Meacham Drive all the way up to the area that's not finished now. So, right, and that's that's and why he's coming up with the four hundred or five hundred thousand because he's not counting anything that's down yet. Well, the the four or five hundred thousand. I want to be clear that wasn't for asphalt. No, the covenant on the lots was to cover the asphalt. Mm -hmm. so, so the five hundred thousand dollars is to cover drainage on a subdivision that's fully grown in. Uh, which is, as I said, you know, I, we develop in all different towns. I've never had this requirement before, so it was a, it was a real surprise to us at the end. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've got clients that want to build. We're ready to move. Uh, we, we've got this obstacle here that's that's been a real impediment for us. So. Mr. Chair? Yes, go ahead. When, when this application first came in with a previous builder, remember there were a number of people who testified, uh, who lived on Summers Road that there was excessive water draining and I think oh, yeah. I think maybe that's why we that's had that why they had the um, they had ponds back there and I don't know if they those ponds are used anymore but they they did connect the sewers I think through the fire uh, fire access ro road 
and they connected to the town uh, sanitary, or I don't know, whatever's running out there on uh, what's the name of the street. At any rate, they solved it. <laughs> they solved it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing moving around up there now. It's all grown in and stable. But they they did the uh, uh, Sobolski was down and back there, mm -hmm. and the, the long Summers Road they were getting flooded out, and I I don't think they've had a complaint since since. No, not recently. We haven't received any complaints. Yeah. It's got to be better than what it was before they started there. Oh yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't know if they know anything. They about They solved it. their problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well. Yeah, we had quite a and time getting it solved. Before they got it was there. solved. No, before that's what they I mean. Yeah. By yeah. them building there, solved some of the problems for yeah. the residents on Summers Road by diverting the water. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. But Chet put in a water control system before he bought it. Mm -hmm. Right, but this, this system, I'm, to your point, I'm sure solved a lot of problems downstream because it retains it mm -hmm. and holds it back where before it was uncontrolled. Right. You know, these um, detention basins control the water and the flow. Okay, I, I don't know. Lori, what's the solution? Um, uh, Ginny, I have a question for you because you have worked here. Uh, when a subdivision lot is built on, did we require a bond for that? Or was it just going to building and that was it? There was a, uh, when a subdivision was being built, they came in and the bond was posted for the whole, the whole entire subdivision. And then, uh, or they could have done a fee in lieu of you know, where there was no yeah, bond they and they just paid a fee each time one was sold. But um, no. Uh, it wasn't, know. there wasn't a, a bond for each unit? No. No, okay. That's so why I'm the, saying 39 would be much to keep track of. So the um, lumping like five together or 10 together, not necessarily in the same phase, but you know, like putting it up for like five at a time. That would be great because so, it would be easier for you to track. My concern is um, with the turnover, hopefully there won't be any turnover, but it seems like in this town there's a lot of turnover and <laughs> people things fall through the cracks and that's not anything to do with anyone, but it's may, we want to make it as easy as possible for the developer. And that's my concern. And when you're referring to the bonds, you're referring to a subdivision bond where you have to put the road in and everything, right? Yes. So that's what's unusual here because the road's already in. So the road, the, the right? Oh, and this isn't a subdivision in the sense of you know it doesn't fit. It's 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 an entity for senior housing, and right. you could relate that to a subdivision of senior housing, but it's not called a subdivision. It's not treated as a subdivision because the houses can be closer and on smaller lots. Yeah, right. right. But, but along the same lines, the public roadway is already in it's already turned over to the town because it's taylor road that's a public roadway right but they aren't doing anything on taylor road that's my point so the the roads that go through this subdivision are not going to be turned over to the town of enfield no I, you have to stop calling it a subdivision you have to refer to it as senior housing development because they're, they're two different animals land unit development yes however you want right. to say it yes right. right but the pud yes the streets are owned by the right. pud right, right. Not private the town right but you so want to make sure fail, if the streets fail mm -hmm. it falls back on the planned unit development but not doesn't the, the town vehicles go on those roads like the sewer the sept uh trash recycling they go on roads for that so um you want to make sure it's finished um when i first came misty meadows they kind of went bankrupt misty meadows is public roads right but the this point is they went bankrupt and they couldn't get the roads finished so that's why they look at bonds for roads right but if if this gentleman or this this plan unit development mm -hmm. goes bankrupt mm -hmm. The homeowner association mm -hmm. owns those roads, not the town of Enfield. Correct. If the roads fail, it falls on the homeowners association. Where a subdivision, mm -hmm. if the roads fail after a year, they fall on the town of Enfield. But the homeowners association relies on the town to make sure that the minimum is met for each of the roads that are put in. Otherwise, you could have just sand. 
a ravel. Right. So, so no. the build, the the private drive has to be built to the standards as set forward by the town for a private road, but it does not meet the, the standards for a public road. Correct. And, and and I don't know what happened here, but it's our experience that sometimes the DPW in a town will come out and watch asphalt being put down so they can measure it mm -hmm. to make sure it mm -hmm. fits within the you know the it's plan. Typical. It's right. typical. We see this a lot. I don't know if it happened here. We weren't around. Right, and neither was I. <laughs> but um, what I what I'm used to doing with something like this is we would have like an overall erosion control bond for the site, the for the major uh, grading or whatever. Should there be that, and then we would bond separately for each unit, um, like uh, for in East Windsor for a subdivision house, we would we just charge twelve hundred dollars just for grading around the house and and the digging the hole. And that doesn't go to planning and zoning. It just we just hold it and then we we give it back when they get the CO. So, what they're trying to do is something along those lines, as opposed to looking at the entire site as though it was a brand new site that was going to be dug up and the trees taken out and all that. It's it's all grass right now. Most of the roads are in. They're private drives. So I, I would like to be able to come up with a plan where they can just bond for each unit. And if, if it has to come back here for, for um, to be released, then so be it. But I mean, in order to get this built, because we want to work with the applicant. The, sub, the plan unit development is done oh, yeah. for the most part. So right. each lot he works on, a simple lot, erosion bond and anything else he needs for that particular lot is going to be the only effect mm -hmm. I, I mean we don't have to worry about the roads washing out or neighbors you know are the sewers all in water yeah. everything's Everything. in so it's just it's just a local hookup to sewer and water so but I just as, wanted to as make you know sure from, that it was all in because right. you know, that's the tail end of the uh, approval that we gave it just seems pretty onerous to require them to post bonds for something that's already been done. Well, in this case, it's already done, but think of how many hands you tie for somebody. If we weren't willing to work with him, that's a half a million dollars. Yeah. You know, he's having a hard time, not him. Everybody's having a hard time selling a house <laughs> as it is right now, you know, and doing stuff, working with these people to try to move stuff forward. <laughs> is what we have to do right now. Otherwise, these things are going to sit empty for years and years. Ken, he had suggested um, getting a letter of credit for the five, or uh, I think it was five you said. Yeah, we could do a letter of credit for like six of them. We would never have more than six of them. Right. Then you wouldn't have to post and it. And that could on. just float. Hmm. You know. Great. However, he does it. I mean, the letter of credit, the town right. was saying no. <laughs> but and if we if got a six. legal opinion on it mm -hmm. because the town nope. refused us. And I remember. We were involved. I remember, and but the what I was going to opinion said yes. So, if yeah, the letter it's... of credit worked for us a lot better than posting cash bonds. It does, but if you if you're going to go for 39 individual, I will be voting no on it because that's too much to keep well, track of. Well, like you said, he's going to do six or eight Both and be six. done with it. And yeah, the I'm... key is the only thing the town has to do, <clears throat> uh, Lori, is every year when the letter of credit goes up for yep. renewal because that's where yep. the ball gets I know, yeah. I know. And, that's, and, that's and they notify the, the town that's on the town yeah. Yeah. right well, they and they notify the town open-ended letter of credit right it's pretty standard well, a bank usually just sends out a letter every year I mean I, 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 I renew those we have a lot of internal support right. on this. but I know right. that's that was their argument with us with the letter of credit and right. it was well, never taken off the book they lost their shirts when the banks had problems yeah could, could, Laurie, you, you mentioned the fact that you had done this at a previous location. In terms of, is, is this something that is difficult to, to maintain a, a good sense of what's going on? Or do you think that it, it, you know, if you're organized enough, you could sort of maintain, you know, a flow or, a, you know, sort of a, an assignment for, you know, each, you know, building as it gets mm -hmm. completed and assign it to a, a different building as it's being, you know, started so that, you know, basically there's, there's a sum of money, you know, in a pot that that is constantly being, you know, utilized in different locations. But mm -hmm. basically, you were not 
really releasing it. We're not really you know, getting it back, but we're just floating it around from you know building to building to building as this thing develops. And and obviously, if there's you know a real depression or something that occurs, and and you're not building any lots, then you get your money back because of the fact that you, you're not going to float it around. But in that sense, if if Lori can you know has experience doing that, and she doesn't think it's a big deal, you know I'm all for it. You know why do we want to you know tie up that much money and and the fact that you know our staff is somewhat familiar with with utilizing that type of method so why don't we just say let's do it and the only th the only other question I had is you mentioned the fact that there was you know a, a, a an initial you know I guess bond that was done for the erosion and control yeah generally for like the whole site but then we would bond separately for right. each unit but but are, are we doing any significant regrading on, I don't on the believe site so no. No. So so there basically we might not we might not need that bond. Right. And but as alluded there may be some uh, additional erosion controls where there are the steeper slopes. Right. So right. but maybe for those units we bond for a little bit more or Correct. Just Correct. And, and and again that could be an individual thing as as you're looking at a, at a particular lot and if it has significant, you know, regrading or, you know, grading that would cause possibly cause erosion control, you would, you know, so his, you know, 12,891 number might be $15,000 at that lot because of the fact that there's additional costs associated with the erosion control. It's important to note too that even if we had six homes under construction, they wouldn't be all at the same phase. So the most exposure is obviously when you put the foundation in, but there would be some maybe one or two at foundation stage and there would be a couple of them that would be farther along and then there would be a couple of them that would be all planted in. You know, that the grass would be growing, you know, because we're towards the end of construction. So, you know, they'd still be under construction, but the soil is all stabilized. We wouldn't have yeah. six big open sores, if you will, um, yeah. out there, so. I mean, it certainly it makes it easier if it's done by phase and per unit per phase, but if uh, the commission's okay with it not going by phasing then you know I, I think that we could sit down and work with John Cabibbo and and together and work out a reasonable number oh, yeah. per unit yeah, you gotta help them out. It's, well, it's easy. what we usually do from staff's level we would just you know mark each unit and and you know, like on a map and just keep one map and sure. say okay you know this this has been posted for this site and you know if it gets a CO then you could utilize that for the next but otherwise if you start one without a CO with the other money, then you have to post the new bond. Okay. Seems like the consensus on the commission. Oh, what yeah. I'm hearing is everybody agrees with the six. Mm -hmm. so is there a, le <laughs> yeah, is, is there a legal resolution that we can? Sorry, you need. Tell us what your concern is. Okay. Um, I received comments from some of the people who live in Shaker Heights who were concerned about. Um, like if you build at the top of the hill what is it it's watch hill i think yeah. at the top yeah and then like they they have to pay for things like plowing for the one house that's up at the top and everyone's paying for in the hoa for maintaining the streets all the way up to the top where there's only one person up there all the money that they would get from the housing lots in between the bottom of the hill and the top of the hill they said they were concerned about just like they they don't have the money from those other building lots that that's would be the there to pay group. for that. That's I mean that's the HOA, um, but I've had like emails from people who are v very concerned about that so from the, that area. Court. That's the only reason that mm -hmm. a road so, under construction, uh, the section of road, a cul-de-sac that you're just building three or four houses in. You as the contractor is going to maintain and plow right. that road. Right. I mean that's how we've done it. You've I, got manholes think, sticking out of the not, ground. You rip the plow right off the truck. If so there's only one I don't house, buy that. It's not, it's not the their group. Right. No, that's something well, we would work out with the homeowners <clears throat> association. And even if the road was well, it's a good question. Know. Are are well, the houses? Well, that's there, what the because it's a private road, they pay to plow their own roads, yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's what the homeowners association she's saying is complaining about. They don't want to pay, pay for, to they plow pay that a lump sum for the whole project. Well, they're probably only paying for a portion of it right now, but as the developer, every development until we've ever done finished, he has until to pay top for it. codes on. Yep. It's probably better what did they sign up for when they got the place. Well, when you buy in an in a subdivision plan unit development <laughs> like this under construction 
You're going to expect this, and I would think That's that the homeowners association would be doing everything they could to help the man finish, so they can stop hearing the dump trucks and the cement trucks and the backhoes. Yeah. And, <laughs> right. So. Know, that's so, a good question, uh, though. I mean, it is a good question by the homeowners, but typically we subsidize that plowing if that's what happens. You know, it's it's not, it's not an insurmountable problem. It's we we experience that. We've got a few of these going, and we experience that in all of them. It, it gets worked out. I mean, it's not. Yeah, that's what I was just saying. I don't think that's a worry for us. That's between you and that. Exactly. You know, and, and we want to do the right thing. I mean, yeah. so. Uh, at what point will the new units become part of the homeowners association? Or are they already? Uh, well, the, the, this association is actually already managed by the residents there. So right. So as each unit them. becomes as, as we uh, see certified, all, then they'll become. Then they become legally phased in. Right. Okay. Yeah. Before, right before the closing. All right. So, but it, it, you know, it seems to me that you, as the developer, would be responsible for paving those roads or plowing those roads rather um, during the winter time. I assume that the manholes have shims on them. Right. They do. Yeah, they so. do. Or there's a couple of them up there that need to be fixed before the winter, but we would maintain those. Yeah. So un until such time as the roads become part of the association, I guess it would be your responsibility unless they're already owned by them. Well, the roads are part of the association, but I think, I think so. the real question here by the homeowners, and it's a good one, is if you have one home up at the top of Watch Hill who plows all the way up to there, and that's where I say we work that out with the association and the people that are plowing it, we subsidize that because you know, you know, send a plow all the way up there to get the one house, um, or we just plow it ourselves. Either one. Right. Whether Would you, you take the share <coughs> of the remaining five lots and. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's an issue. Sure. So I I think that we could uh, work together outside of the meeting and. Um, work with uh, the engineering and perhaps maybe we could get a, a, some sort of communication from the homeowners association as to some agreement to the do you need to a, the concern a, of a resolution from us tonight or do you, do you a resolution later or how do you want to handle this we're all in agreement to do it yeah. but how i can make a motion well i don't know if so uh, just yeah, to to, to, to modify the bonding requirements. Right, modify the bonding yeah. requirements in, in terms of, you know, the individual units would get, you know, bonded as they're being constructed with some additional attention to erosion control, you know, measures if they're necessary, and that, you know, the, the bonds could be a floating, you know, situation where they can be, you know, applied to other units as, you know, buildings are being certified for occupancy so that you know we don't tie up a significant amount of, of cash for the um, developer and the fact that as you know 90 percent of certain areas get developed that that the roadways be you know top coded to ensure that you know sure. the, the, it, the, they maintain a certain structural integrity I, of the existing you know, infrastructure in that's a little involved yeah I think that what you're saying is great but I think that we want to leave it to staff well, what, it'll be handled by staff. But staff is going to handle it, so, you know, we're not... Yeah, but he's reading just, into the minutes what we want, right. and he's 100% correct yeah, on doing that. Yes. And that way, if there's any miscommunication between Mr. Pecoy and the staff, you come right back to the meeting, and we know what we said, and he made it very clear, and I think we're all on the same page. Yeah. But you had said earlier, Jenny, yep. we do have a high turnover. Yep. So, not that Lori's going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. But if Jen goes hope, somewhere, hope, yeah. her <laughs> replacement <laughs> might will, not remember it. Right. So, so, so what we would do is keep like a, a map like this, yeah. And and we would just mark on this, and yep. you know, for each one that's being done, yep. and whatever. I just want to make sure they're, the they're right. not locked into twenty nine thousand per lot, and there's no other way they can do I, it. I think I that we're going to come up with a reasonable amount. Yeah, because I don't want them to come back for every single house, and they have to come back for bond releases. Well, yeah. is, is he finished with what he's I'm stating? Because, oh, yeah. And, and realistically, it could be done with administrative review, the entire, you know, motion. Yeah, it's or um, procedure. Let's I would just like way. to ask one question and, and make one thing clear. I, I need to be clear on something. The building inspector will not even review plans until this bonding issue is resolved. So, I mean, I've got clients that want to start us to, us to start homes, and we is can't. Is the head of the, uh, the building departments under her control? So okay. why don't we make Rich made a motion that we let it be handled administratively, 
and we end this tonight yeah. so we can get building permits going for this That's gentleman. That's what I wanted. And it right. Uh, you're he right, Charlie. And Rich is right by reading it. So. Was that a motion? Yes. Second. Okay. <laughs> sure Uh-oh, it's 8.15. <laughs> I, I, yeah, oh, no. but I, I just want to make sure the secretary and everybody knows what we're doing. D just a clarification that there will be no more phasing. Is that correct? From applicant? Just yes. Court, yeah. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So because you approved a phasing already prior, um, I think that you should just make a motion for that just for the record, too. Because that was something. I'll, I'll modify my motion to ex exclude no. any phasing requirements for this application. Yeah. And I'll second that too. All in favor? All right, well, Rich, let's yeah. take the last motion first then. You just modified. I just modified. It's well, just, all right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. It's been modified. Okay. Anything else? Is this going to work? Everybody's clear now on what we're trying to yeah. do. I think we're good. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank goodness. Thank you. I, I hope to it. see you back in a Great. couple months where you say, I got eight going. I yeah. need to raise my bond or we need to do something because yeah. you yeah. got 12 sold. So yeah, we're looking forward luck. to that. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. If I, if I could just say one thing, yeah. don't lose this lady, both of these ladies. <laughs> no, don't lose the tape. The predecessor we had an awful time with, but don't lose her. <laughs> Thank you. Your complaints you. were recognized, and that's why she's sitting there. So She's great. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for solving a problem. Okay, we're all set. Yeah. I just misplaced my. Okay, that's all right. Are, are we on the River Gateway now? Oh, River Gateway now, or? <laughs> River Gateway. No. Okay. Other business is discussion of River Gateway, and uh, if uh, Lori, you've got an extension till when? Right, so um, I worked with uh, Matt Pafford at OPM, who was very gracious and tried his best and was successful in getting us an extension till the end of January 2019. So due to extenuating circumstances of staffing levels. So, um, so in order to keep the momentum, we would like to have another workshop next week. Seven o'clock. The only room we could get was the Enfield room. So, it's okay. and so we didn't prepare anything for tonight because of that. So we'd rather be much more prepared for next week. And I know that we have somebody, someone in the audience. I don't know whether you want to say anything, but well, they always want to say something. So it's okay. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I, I, okay. And I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, I should not have invited them up without your... Oh, no, that's okay. fine. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, you were a little what boy. Gretchen here. Uh, thank you. Is this... Is it on? Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, you just have a soft voice. Yeah. Gretchen Pfeiffer, Hall 4 Summers Road. Um, so at the last meeting, there was a question asked about values... Um, of properties next to open space. And so I did a quick um, Google search, and I mean, I already had an opinion before that, as my professional opinion as a realtor, was that yes, um, surrounding property values are um, increased being next to open space and parks. So my Google search um, generally um, verifies that. There's been many studies done, um, but it does sort of, um, there are variables. So it depends upon what the open space is, and it depends upon the neighborhood. So I have um, three sort of quick reports that I, I printed up that I'll give to you. And so one of them, I, I just took the conclusion, it was somebody's, um, I guess, I think you call it a thesis for their doctorate um, in, in Milwaukee. And there's one, I believe it's from the state of Connecticut, that um, gives some um, specific 
findings for different um, locations. And so generally, um, being next to open space uh, does increase values, but if you were next to open space that was, say, a clear-cut forest, um, it, would, it would actually be um, devalued. Uh, if you're next to a park with um, a playground or skateboard, that usually um, does not really increase values and it, it might possibly decrease values. If you're in an area with high crime rates, um, with the right design, it says that it can actually improve um, property values. So um, I just wanted to share that with you. And um, so basically it just says really uh, you need to um, properly design the open space, whatever it is, next to the neighborhood and design it for, for that location. So I just wanted to share that with you. Thank you. You might want to present that again next week when the people are all here. <laughs> Well, she's, it depends on what you're putting next to your house. It could be well, yeah, pro or a know, con. I mean, if you put the landfill in, they're probably not going to like it. Well, that's, yeah. that's not open space. It is. I, so I've heard that uh, space if is it's free next. recreation. Oh, Karen? No? Okay. No. I, I've heard that if it's next to a rails to trails, that that's a very popular thing to have next to you. Yeah. So, and that's open space. Okay. Uh, correspondence? I didn't have anything. Anyone with uh, clinicians' correspondence? Yeah, I got one. Go ahead. Uh, quite some time ago, it's spoken to our CEO about a property. On Can you move your microphone down? Because it's hard to hear you. Sorry. I might turn it on, too. It might be <laughs> <laughs> That's always helpful. Mary's well, not here. Back, I spoke to the CEO about a property on the corner of uh, South George, Washington, and uh, Middle Road. And there's a truck abandoned in there. That the man that owns the property says it isn't abandoned, but now it's buried behind it, about 17 feet of growth, <laughs> so you can't even see it. But it's still in there. <laughs> and, uh, he knows what it is, <laughs> because he he talked to the owner. It was a property the town sold to him, yeah, that, and he you know, thought that he could use it for anything he wants, but it's too small to do anything it's with, a, so he's using it for. Hmm? It's at the V, right? Right at the V, where Middle Road comes off of Hazard Avenue. I seen the truck in, in, in uh, South George, Washington, goes the other way. Yeah, yeah but. Um, well, we'll probably have to work more on the abandoned vehicle ordinance before we can enforce that. Which well, it's an unregistered vehicle to start with. Recently, <laughs> pardon? It's, a, it's an unregistered vehicle to start with, plus. The property is way overgrown. So it might be a blight, blighted property then. A little and bit of it both, may be yeah. on our list, by the way. Well, the truck so. itself is blight. Yeah. Well, if you can't see it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but now the stuff that blocks it is blight. So yeah, it's, just, it's continuous okay. blight. We'll take a look at that. Nick. Yeah. Okay. I know he said he was working on it. I just wanted to know if he had any uh, progress. Nick. Th there's um, a parking lot, I think that has uh, soil and uh, old concrete pipes and stone that's been piled on it for well over a year. It's uh, on the corner of Pleasant Street and I don't know if it's Whitworth Street, just just um, just north of uh, where Mark's Restaurant is. Yeah, that is in connection with Bigelow. Um, I guess they were redoing their roadways and they when they were doing work over there, that's kind of where they ended up stockpiling it, and Rick is aware of that situation. So it's on his pending list right now. <laughs> okay, thank you. It's, it's been well over a year. I know we always point out some of the things that need to be improved in town, but I do have to say the people, the new bridal shop that's going in where more rug used to be, they are doing an absolutely amazing job with that building, and it's starting to look really nice on that corner. So I want to give them kudos for that. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Uh, oh, she's not here to make the motion. <laughs> no, director of planning report. Nothing. <laughs> I, I'm still trying to get more into the planning aspect of things. Um, we disclosed the deputy director position, so um, we're but we're not probably going to be able to do interviews until about the third week of October. So. We're probably looking at two months before we could get somebody in. But okay. once they're in, I'll be able to uh, dedicate a little bit more time to the planning end of okay, Jen, the municipality. You got, <laughs> Jen's got something to say. Um, we really only have uh, like two pending applications left um, for this commission. So we've been moving things along pretty well. Um, and those are the villages and the liquor store, which was they wanted, they asked to be on trip for the next agenda. So. The villages? If, yep. Okay. Uh, the same, we started before, and you got to be careful with it. Well, you call me anyway. Uh, uh, but when you are about ready to call me, there shouldn't be too many other things on the agenda when you do the villages. Right. Uh, just, just so you know, that week is the week that both. Uh, Jed and Raquel will be going to Casio training, so um, they will not be here because they have a, an exam the following day. So oh. I will be here. Um, I'll be at SNEPA, but I'll come up. It's just at, at Hart in Hartford, so I'll just come in and, and uh, handle the meeting that night. Okay. Because they're going to be needing to study for their exam because the I next think day. We'll, as before, we'll have a crowd and. They are taking quite a while to answer the questions that uh, were asked of them by, I know, right. especially Rich and uh, Ken. Right, but uh, I, I, I don't, I think that's probably a better thing. You know, less people that are familiar with the history of that subdivision and the fresh faces, faces here in it. For the well, first time, you did. Is good. Well, it's brand new absolutely. Right. That's, That's what I'm saying, and you know, so that way nobody can say there was a you know precedent, a precedent set, or anything oh, no, from no. the past. So no, no. can't go mm -hmm. there. Don't. No. Court said so. Right. Yep. So, so uh, but I'm just saying when we set the agenda, be careful that you don't suggest too many other things on on that because. Uh, it was very well attended last time, and the Scanic River Association has uh, an interest in it because they, they had paths and so forth that they were interested in. Why don't we do it the same night as the River Gateway? That'd be quick. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I want to try to avoid. Yeah. Only if you want to bring breakfast again. Yeah, we'll just make sure the Patriots are playing that night. <laughs> okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? All in favor. Yes. What are we doing? Thank you, ladies We're and done. gentlemen. And